welcome back. What's up? So glad to have you here again. We're going to talk about love some more because this is the month of love. We can celebrate it all throughout the month, all 28 days. Is it 28 this year? Yeah, no leap year. So it's 28 days, all 28 days we can be celebrating love, even beyond that. So we're wearing red to remind you of the love. Glad that you're here. Last week on Valentine's Day, we were talking about whether or not we should celebrate Valentine's Day what Valentine's Day was and what it means to us as believers. Again, I hope that you are here, ready to hear the word that God has for you because it is a great word and not because it's my word, because I think so, but because it's his word. We're sharing his word, we're learning, we're growing, we're increasing. All right, very soon I'm gonna put on the calendar a lunch hangout. I hope you can join me for that. We're just gonna go over to Whataburger. We're gonna sit around. You can wear a mask if you want to. You can sit eight seats away if you want to. It'd just be great to see your face. And I also hope to see your face sometime actually in service. I get to see some of you all every now and then. And I would love to see more if you have an opportunity. But please, 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 if you're going to have an opportunity, you can sign up for that uh, lunch hangout when it comes up. It'll be in the next, uh, let's say, week or two. All right. So just make sure you follow the announcements. I don't have the date in front of me. Sorry. I'll get it and we'll get it done. All right, going over to the WB, don't forget that. And for the announcements for that, so you can keep up with the information, don't forget to send the word tag T-A-G-G to our phone number, 713-903-8533. I think send the word tag there and you'll be on the list. So when I send out a couple updates throughout the week, you can get it and you can know what's up. All right. Let's talk about what we have today. I told you last week that we're going to talk this week about what is love. What is this love? What love? What do you mean love? Yes, that's what we need to know. You may think you know, but you have no idea. That's an old saying like from an old movie or something like that. So, you know, you think you know love. I think I know love. But love is one of those things we can actually grow in our understanding for a long period of time. As you get older, as you have life experiences, as you learn more, as you read more of the Bible, as all those things are going on, you'll have more and more opportunities to expand your understanding of love. So don't think you know everything about love already. I don't. And so if we don't think that we know it, then we'll be open to learn some stuff. Now we're gonna pick up where we left off last week. If you didn't see the video from last week, It's okay. Just go back and look at the video from last week. You can do that. Not taking attendance, not calling any names. Just get it and you can be caught up with that. But we're going to start now where we ended there. And we're going to talk about John chapter 13. Or we're going to start in John chapter 13. All right, so turn, swipe, flip over there to John chapter 13. This is the real first John. Not the first John that we looked at before, but that's a part of last week's video. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. Inside joke. John 13, we're going to start in verse number 35. It says, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. A couple things to look at in the first part of the verse. And we're going to do this briefly because we already talked about it a little bit at the end of last week's video. So it says here, by this, all men shall know that you are my disciples. It doesn't say that all Christians will know. It doesn't say that church people know. It doesn't say that Americans will know. It says that all will know. All men are supposed to know that we're believers based on our love. Now, we have to define love, and that's what we're going to do a little bit more of today. But people on the outside should be able to look at us and how we treat each other, how we deal with each other, how we deal with people in general, and they should be able to see love there. Now, there are different types of love that we're going to talk about in just a moment, uh, and that will come into play with this. But it says if we love one another, if we have love one to another, or based on the way that we treat each other, we treat people, we treat the world, how we deal with things, if we do that in a loving way, People are supposed to know and recognize that we are believers. I remember a long, long time ago when I was a wee lad in the D. We lad up north in Detroit. 
And I remember there was this girl at school when I was going to I was going to public school. I think I was at Burton International in the Cass Corridor. And uh, there was this girl. I remember kind of her face. I don't remember her name. But she used to smile all the time. And I was a Christian. And, you know, I didn't know this verse. I wasn't like, you know, uh, a super special child or anything like that, all spiritual or anything like that. But I remember this girl and she was smiling all the time. She was in my class. She was in my, you know, my grade or whatever. And I remember asking her one day if she was a Christian because I'd see her smile all the time. And I was like, man, she's got to be a Christian. And I asked her if she was a Christian and she said no. And I was shocked and I was surprised. I was like, well, how are you not a Christian? You're like always smiling and happy. And in my mind, for whatever reason at that time, I associated happy people or joyful people with Christianity. Now, I was wrong. She wasn't a Christian, but that was something that was, you know, that was going on in my mind. It kind of lines up with this verse. People are supposed to know that we're believers, not just because they smile, but because of how they interact with other people. So the word of God is telling us that other people can judge a book by its cover. I know we say you're not supposed to do that. No, we're not supposed to profile. We're not supposed to do this, do that and other thing. But other people will be able to know that we're disciples of God based on our love. And we can also know, based on the other verse that we looked at, that if people are not people of love, if they don't act with love, if they don't respond out of love, then the Bible says they are not of God. Now, that doesn't mean uh, everything has to be, oh, great. Hey, I'm so glad to see you. Like a burglar breaks in your house and you're like, hey, Mr. Burglar. Uh, well, you shouldn't be here, but you know, I'm just so glad that you are healthy and well, and I'm just going to ask you if you could leave and, uh, if you could repair that lock, that window, that whatever that you broke to, that would just be great, Mr. Burglar. No, I don't believe that's what the Bible is talking about. And we're going to, again, we're going to try to get more into defining love and it'll be something that God can reveal in your heart and he'll reveal in my heart. Uh, but that's not the only side of love to be smiling and jovial and, and super nice, right? There are other sides of love. Like love can be vicious. Love can be violent because there are people who love other people. Like I love my children and I'll get super violent if I need to protect them. And so that violence is love for them because it's what if, if that's what I feel that I need to use to do to protect them, it may look like violence or maybe violence in one way, but in another way, it's love. I'm loving them and I'm going to protect them by neutralizing a threat or doing whatever I have to do so that there's not something that can harm them or hurt them. So love is performed in different ways. God loves us so much that he'll protect our decision to go to hell. God sends people to hell. People die and they go to heaven and he says, you didn't accept the name. I'm sorry, I love you, but I can't force my will on you, so you go to hell. You didn't accept what I said, and that's fine, that's cool, it's unfortunate, you go to hell. So God will per he'll protect your right to go to hell the same way that he'll protect your right to go to heaven when you accept his son and his sacrifice. So, love doesn't always look the same. It's not always ooey-gooey, it's not always pleasant. But love is love. So we want to identify a little bit more about what love is. But we see right here that we're supposed to be absolutely people of love who respond, who act out of love. So the other part that I want to look at is considered the love chapter. All right. This is the chapter that's about love. Love. In the Bible. All right. So when we talk about love and we look at biblical love, this is one chapter that kind of defines love. There's love all throughout the Bible. Because remember, as we said, God is love. So we looked at last week in 1 John. God is love. So love is all the way through the Bible from the first page to the last page. But this specific chapter is on love. And here it calls it charity. So when you hear about a charitable organization, we get that word in our culture from the Bible. Because the Bible used the word charity when they were uh, um, when they were putting it together and they, they saw the actual words, they uh, translated the word charity. And so when you give money to a charity, you're giving to an organization that's supposed to help other people. That's what charities are. And they, we get that word from the Bible. Charity means love. And so those organizations are supposed to be 
love organizations. And so they're supposed to help other people by doing whatever it is that they do, but they're called charities and they're supposed to be operating out of love. Now, real quick, I don't want to take too much time. Maybe we'll talk about that next week. So I want to identify a little bit more about what love is. Okay, so we're going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Turn, swipe, flip, tap over there. I want to start in verse number one. He says, though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not charity or love, I become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Now, I want you for homework to also read verses one. For homework, read the whole chapter 14. It's only 13 verses. I don't want to hear it. Read 1 Corinthians 13. You're not even doing that much homework with your light COVID school anyway. So it's not like you don't have time. Come on. All right. So read 1, chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. All of it. What he starts to say in this verse, number one, that you'll see repeated, especially down through 13, is that we can do all these great other things, but if we don't have love, we're worthless. All right. So you could be LeBron James. You could be a great basketball player. You could be Michael Jordan. You can be whatever, whoever it is that you want to be, Steph Curry, whoever is your favorite, you can be that type of person. But if you don't have love, if you don't have love in your heart, if you're not a loving person, you're a worthless person. That's what the Bible says. You can be the president. You can be some war hero. You can be a great scientist, an astronaut, uh, a great actor, a great music artist, a great whatever you want to call it. And the Bible is saying that if you do all those great things, but don't have love, simple love in your heart, if you don't have that, it says you are a worthless human being. Because you don't have love. We are supposed to be people of love. We're supposed to have love. We're supposed to operate with love. And all that greatness will be whittled down to nothing when we don't have love. Then the Bible here tells us a little about love, like how love operates, how it acts, how you can know love when you see it. It says charity or love suffers long. It says charity is kind. It doesn't envy. It doesn't vaunt itself. Like, you know, there are some people that are like, oh, well, you know, I got to be in front. I'm love. This focus on me, everything, you know, doing all this other stuff. But the Bible says love doesn't do that. Love doesn't always have to call attention to itself. We're going to have to talk about this a little bit more because we need to know about what love is. It says love is not puffed up. Do you know some people that are puffed up? Like they want everybody to know how great they think they are. They're constantly talking about their, uh, how, how well they do this stuff. And they also talk about how they don't do things messed up or bad. And just, just constantly talking about themselves. Just, you know, got the big head, constantly puffed up. The Bible says that's not love. Because when we act that way, well, one of the ways that we can figure out what love is, is how it makes other people feel. Now, people feel all kind of different things for all kind of different reasons. You can't be 100%, 100% responsible for how people feel. You can try to be nice to some people and they'll, you know, they'll somehow translate that as not being kind. So, you know, you don't just go off of people's feelings. But... In general, for an emotionally healthy and stable human being, normal person, when we act with love, it helps other people or makes other people feel good. When we do things opposite of love, then it doesn't. And so for me to stand here and be puffed up and for me to tell you how great I am, I'm pretty cool, I'm pretty great. But if I were to just sit here and tell you how great I am, that's not really going to do anything for you. That's just going to do something for me. And so that wouldn't be love for me to tell you how great I am, even though I am like pretty great. But I don't need to sit here and talk about it and tell you about it because that's not going to be something that affects you so great. It says love envieth not in verse four. That means that love is not jealous of what other people have. We have this thing in our country, in our culture right now, where it's considered class warfare. And there are a lot of people that are on the lower income spectrum that hate people are on the higher income spectrum. And there are some, you know, agitators and people that try to stir those emotions up. But if we envy the people that have what we don't have, then we're not operating in love. Now we can use those people as motivation and say, oh man, that's great. You know, I can't wait to get there, whatever the case might be. But if we have envy in our hearts, then we're not operating with love. So for homework for this week, 
I want you to read all of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Focus on the first three verses and how it says that even though you can get a 100% A's, you could be uh, on the A honor roll every single year, all throughout middle school and high school, but if you don't have love, it says you're nothing. It says you're worthless. It says you're not as good as that C student who got worse grades than you, but they're a loving person. God can use them and they're gonna enjoy their life a whole lot more than you and your A's. Focus on that and then I want you to read or focus on, think about verses four through seven and where it tells us about what love is. It says in verse number six that love rejoices not in iniquity. Love doesn't rejoice in bad. Love doesn't rejoice in evil things or things that are against what the Bible says or things that are against the law or bad you know, things, calamity, people in pain or people in distress, things like that. Love doesn't rejoice in that because that's causing people to hurt. And so, you know, you know, you might smash an ant or do something to uh, an animal. You know, you might shoot a bird, you go hunting, things like that. But love doesn't rejoice when a person is put in that place. Like love doesn't rejoice when a child is um, hurt or going through terrible things. Love's not rejoicing in those things. So we wanna talk about, define that a little bit more. But we're out of time for today. We're out of tag time. I can't keep you here all day because I know you won't watch it anyway. But read this whole chapter because we find out a little bit more about what love is. We'll come back next week and we'll wrap this up and you will be a more loving person than ever before. All right, Tag, that's it. I'm out of here. You're it. <laughs>